Hi, I'm Tom Campbell from Cultaholic.com, joined by Sam, front Russian lip lock, and an extra dose of news yeah. today. <laughs> It never changes with you, does it, Tom? It's always a different move. Well, that every it does, time. Every does change. Oh. Ah, did a bamboozle on you. <laughs> Here's some news. Triple H responds to Kenny Omega's recent AEW versus NXT comments. Cody opens up about his final meeting with Triple H in the WWE. And a match with Brock Lesnar is key to WWE's rumored Kane Velasquez deal. We'll have a deep dive into this in a sec. There's a war on, Sam. Is that? There's a war Is on! It every Wednesday night, but it hasn't started yet. Hey, George, you know what? I feel like I've been in the trenches for about three months at this point. <laughs> uh, it's just kicking off. Oh. How are we going to be after like three weeks? Do you know what? I, I think we're going to have to go in some sort of special rehab. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all will be. I think we'll go in there <laughs> and we'll see the guys from Wrestle Talk sort of waiting in reception. <laughs> we'll all just be a little bit frayed around the edges. Uh, Kenny Omega recently told Sportkedia uh, if these NXT guys were in the same show as me, they'd be in the dark match. They've been the opening match of my main event match. Ooh, and Triple H has responded, Sam Driver. He bit, didn't he? The massive mark. So, during an interview with Brian Fritz of Sporting News, Triple H sort of responded to this and provided his thoughts on Kenny's comments. He says, It doesn't matter to me if you're going to get thin-skinned and read into stuff and get angry about stuff that people say, it's going to be a rough life. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. Everybody's entitled to put an executive tag on the front of the name. And I think that's a cool thing. And <laughs> pew, 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 <laughs> shots fired. Oh. What a time to be a wrestling fan when you've oh. got this little, little digs back and I forth. I love that. Just a little, uh, like you're all executives. Like, <laughs> it is, it is, because that's Triple H going, hey, look, it's all cool. Yeah. But you're idiots anyway. Ah, <laughs> your turn, Kenny Omega. I don't, like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't think I'm ready mentally for everything that's going to be firing back and forth. Could you imagine, right, because we live in the era now where it's going to be firing back and forth via yeah. social media. Can you imagine during the Monday Night War? having Facebook and Twitter. Oh God, it would be awful. Oh, this is the big thing is what's gonna happen with the first defection? Oh. Because there's gonna be a defection, surely. I kind of hope that we're gonna see a defection on Wednesday night. I'd be, Could you imagine? Be huge, but I, I don't know. I think the only issue is, the difference is these days is that when when the, the foot, when, when Wrestling War 1 happened, um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet again, um, there was, there, WWF were in a much more awkward position and a, and a much and a much more back on the back foot position because they didn't have the money they have now and they didn't have the pull they have now. Yeah. Uh, whereas now I think if say, Kofi Kingston turned up on Dynamite yeah. with the WWE champion over his shoulder, Vince would be like, oh, that's cute, fine, right, well, we're suing you for breach of contract. We yeah, say, I mean, we well, can... the lawsuits happened in the 90s as well, but I think it would just be blown so much further out of, like, the universe with what's happening now, like, especially with social media, like, I, I just don't know what's going to happen. I think news is going to get very interesting. And it all starts tomorrow. Yeah. War starts tomorrow. Batten down the hatches, mum. Talking to he said, she said, to quote Fred Durst that time. Cody Rhodes has been chatting about his final meeting that he had with Triple H. This was in an interview with the Bleacher Report, Sam Driver. It makes me a little bit uncomfortable, this. It's a little bit emotional. Yeah. Blackmail. It's like, it's like tugging, isn't it? A little oh. bit. Cody um, said in this interview, he said there was one conversation with Triple H where he remembers Triple H saying, I'm shocked that you feel this way after everything I've done for your family. Oh. This is oh. after Cody Rose had oh. said, I'm gonna, I'd like my release of my contract to go and do other things. And Triple H did the whole, hey mate, I'll give your dad a job. Yeah, it's well, I mean, Cody responded with, uh, you know, like, I'm not my dad. I can't stay here out of loyalty for you uh, for giving my dad a job in 2005. I get it. And the little boy in me really appreciates what he did for my dad, but I'm not him. He's not here anymore and I've got to be me. And I think he handled that very well because uh, I don't even know how I'd respond if somebody sort of pulled that out. Like, I'll give your dad a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like how he responds to the little song at the end. Yes. I gotta be me. <laughs> I gotta be me. Who'd have thought, though, right, to go back to... Because, you know, we, we, we're, we're hardened, yeah. hardened wrestling fans, myself and New Sam Driver. Um, and we were there in 2016 when Cody Rose left. And we're like, yeah. oh, that's a shame. Who'd have thought that that decision to leave would bring us to the, the time that we're in now. I just, I remember at the time thinking he's gonna go to New Japan, he's gonna do the Ring of Honor stuff, and then give it a year or so, and he'll go back, or a couple of years and he'll go back, but 
obviously couldn't have been more wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I never. I don't think anybody could have foresaw obviously AEW, but Jesus. Amazing times, and just a very, a very telling interview. And maybe Triple H knew something we didn't as well. Possibly. Think about this then, and, and, I, and it dawned on me as I was as I was reading this this morning. We talked a little bit about this on the podcast. The idea that really the the manufacturer of the Wednesday Night War, the modern day wrestling war, is Dusty Rhodes. Yeah. Dusty Rhodes is one of the guys. That is sort of is, is very much the godfather of NXT. Yeah. And he's C Cody's dad. <laughs> yeah. So this is I mean, all Dusty's fault. Or whoever gave Cody the Stardust gimmick. That's which true. Which is Steph, I think. Oh, so it's either I Steph think or Steph, Dusty. Steph mentioned it, and then Vince, apparently his eyes just lit up. I love it. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> Swear word. Oh, Canada, you lucky devils. You've got yourself a TV deal with AEW. PW Insider has reported that TSN will broadcast AEW Dynamite live. 8 p.m. Eastern. Must be nice. Must be nice to get some a good TV deal for yeah. all elite wrestling lads. <laughs> Fine, not bothered anyway. Not bothered anyway. Uh, this is the uh, TSN used to be the home of Monday Night Raw. Yeah. For about a decade, if I remember correctly. Uh, TSN is is like the big sporting network in Canada. I have no idea who airs in Canada, uh, but yeah, I know that TSN is sort of like the big. It's sort of like their Sky Sports, I guess, I think. So it's a big deal for them yeah. to get onto there. Um, so congratulations to Canada. You're going to get to watch it live. Uh, our deal is hilarious. Uh, I don't know whether, whether I was away, whether you did a whole new special on the is, great UK deal that AEW broke it. Wrestling has never been stronger. And yes, it's annoying. We've got to wait a bit, but we can pay to watch it live. And I think that this is a temporary measure in my eyes. I think the UK deal is very much like a, well, we'll just do this until we can get something better because there's such a, a large wrestling audience here. I think it, it doesn't make any sense for that to be a long term thing. I think, you know, maybe early, early end of next year, we're going to see a proper deal. But yeah, the sun Sunday mornings on ITV4 don't exactly. I mean, you, you know, the only other deal that would have been worse than that would have been sort of the graveyard shift on UK TV well, home is, and garden. This is the thing is like, if it's would have it been so early, how are they going to get around some of the more graphic stuff? If there's anything particularly stiff, like I, I know that like world of sport was sort of that was itv1 but that was very very like there wasn't anywhere near as much aggression as you get in AEW. it was all quite sterilized so yeah. i don't know what's gonna happen maybe they'll do the channel 5 wcw worldwide bubbles oh up. i love <laughs> them or just generic crowd shots they used to have on episodes of wwf metal on uh, sky they, one well they did that for ages on sky one i think they might still do it now anybody gets a chair they just cut to some guy going <laughs> really out of sync chanting <laughs> well i'm excited for that then on itv4 do you think maybe that itv were a little bit burned by world of sport which is why they've kind of gone with this real i think i think of the I think uk I think if ITV were burned by World of Sport, they just wouldn't have got into bed with AEW. Yeah, I think true. it might just be like a bit of a discussion still going on on both sides, and there just hasn't been enough time to finalise it. Well, this is just two uh, British curmudgeons complaining about how bad the UK deal is. But, Congratulations, yeah, Canada. Well done, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous of you now, and your police address better. They barely get the network, though, so at least we've got that on them. Ah, stick that, Canada. That's gotta be Kane! That's gotta be Kane! Velasquez! Sam Driver. I knew you were going to do oh, that. I knew you were going to do that. That's got to be crude. Uh, Kate Velasquez has been very much uh, in the news lately because we talked about this only yesterday on the news video where yeah. Kane Velasquez has been blowing people's minds in AAA. Oh, my God, yeah. He was yeah. brilliant, didn't he? Amazing. Loved his work in that. Like, like, he could do planches and hurricane runners. <laughs> Who knew Kane had that in him? Um, but So he's now obviously in talks with WWE and AEW. And Dave Meltzer uh, has been chatting with MMAfighting.com. And uh, he's given a little bit of insight into what may potentially broker a deal between WWE and Kane. Has it got anything to do with the final boss? Quite possibly. <laughs> Quite possible, mon frere. Meltzer said the key to the WWE offer would be building a showdown between Kane Velasquez and Brock Lesnar, the WWE's highest paid wrestler. Yeah, it's... And obviously these two have legit previous beef. 
Yes, uh, Velasquez beat Lesnar in 2010 to win the UFC championship. Mm. So, provided I guess they could get the footage from UFC, they you know they'd be onto a winner. I'm I, I qu I'm quite intrigued. Because I mean, otherwise all they've got to do is sort of be like, you know, that I beat you and and all that stuff, and very barely mention UFC. But if they could get the footage and really, really make a big thing of it, I think it'd be awesome. I think they've done it. I think they've done it well in the past, where they've kind of pulled a match out of thin air and given us reason to love it. Uh, like like SummerSlam where they did Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton. They yeah. went, because of reasons, this is happening. And I think there's enough, you know, without having to show footage, there's enough reason to see Kane versus Brock. Oh, yeah. They've just got to really get him over as an absolute beast when he arrives. Like, he's got to just take Brock to task immediately. I wonder whether Kane Velasquez will ask for the same kind of money as Brock Lesnar. I don't know. I did in the UFC, because this is... <laughs> This is mental, yeah. So just touching on Brock, we've got some figures that have been released uh, regarding Brock's earnings in UFC. This if you want to run them down for me, Tom. Oh, this man has a lovely piggy bank. Uh, oh. So Brock Lesnar has earned a whopping five million dollars from his fights in MMA uh, for UFC. Uh, he's had nine in the octagon, eight during his eight years in the uh, in the UFC. Um, the the probably the biggest chat the biggest money he earned was the match he had recently against Mark Hunt. It was his yeah, sort of his last match, wasn't it? Last last fight, sorry, fights, not match, matches wrestling fights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people in the comments just going like match, 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 match. Not my words, the words of somebody trying to light a cigarette. Um but here's the here's the thing, right? Here's yep. the thing. He's earned five million mm -hmm. from UFC. Half of that he earned from the match with Mark Hunt. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> 2.5 million for the match with Mark Hunt. Uh, let's have a look at some of the others. Uh, quarter of a million for Frank Mir. That yeah. seems like pocket change. I wouldn't get out of bed for a quarter of a million these uh, days. A quarter of a million more for a loss to Frank Mir. <laughs> um, you pay extra to lose. 450 against uh, Heath Herring. 250,000 for that to show. 200,000 win bonus. Uh, his 2000, uh, 2008 win over Randy Couture, 450 grand, which was the same terms as the last one. Uh, and again, he won over Frank Mir in the UFC 100, netting 400 grand. Mental. Nice work if you can get it. We're in the wrong game. <laughs> Imagine, right? So, like with the UFC, so you get money to you get money for showing up, and then money if you win. Yeah, it's what's well, sort of how boxing and, and most you know big and, fight sports have been promoted. And tennis. Ah, tennis. oh yeah, I think yeah, tennis and golf, and yeah. There was a story from Wimbledon about a guy. Um, I wish I could remember his name. You'll tell me, but I'm sure who, who basically got all his money taken off him from Wimbledon because he blatantly just turned up, played really badly, just so he could take like <laughs> the I turned up money, yeah. and then went back home again. So it took his fee. Not expecting to get his share of the purse, so he got he got Jeez. a rollicking for not trying hard enough in Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> if I did the octagon, I get told off for not trying. I mean, if it was like I'll give you two hundred and fifty grand to walk in there and get knocked out, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm amongst that monster. Wouldn't even care. Just like you, you know, you'd get like people absolutely laughing at you, but you know. So are you keen to see Brock versus uh, Kane Velasquez in? I'm keen to see w what they do with it because I reckon they'd want to work it quite stiff. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon it would be bloody and horrible. You couldn't do it as like a... You, you couldn't do it like a WWE match. Like headlocks and clapping. <laughs> they could put it on NXT if, if things start get di getting dire during the, uh, the war. But That'd be quite exciting. Don't forget there is a war on and it all kicks off tomorrow. Yes. How exciting. What a time to be alive. NXT and I AEW. I can't believe it. Which are you watching live? Uh, I will probably be watching... I can't even choose. Oh. I can't even choose. I, I might have them on two screens because there is an overlap, isn't there? Yeah. You've got two tellies. Someone's doing all right. <laughs> Love you, bye. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow Cultaholic on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you like what we do here at Cultaholic, you can check us out on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And no matter what you do, don't ever forget to hit subscribe and join us.